Hey guys, thanks for joining. In today's video, we're gonna go through uh, VirtualBox VM creation and installing from ISO. And we're gonna use Ubuntu Server as an example and go to complete installation of Ubuntu Server and some basic configuration. So let's dive in. Those of you joining first time, my name is Michael Poltan and I'm the founder of Zoom Admin. Uh, which is a cloud-based technology that makes it easier to manage uh, virtual machines and websites. Uh, but in today's video, we're gonna cover uh, creating your local VMs on VirtualBox and uh, installing Ubuntu from ISO. I know it can be a bit challenging if you're doing it at the first times. Um, and also Ubuntu has some, some kicks in terms of uh, installing and configuring and which version of ISO you should select uh, so I'm gonna show you all that in today's video if you like it please hit the like button or consider subscribing I'm going to do uh, a few more videos to cover some of the different features uh, VirtualBox has including sharing folders between your host machine and VirtualBox uh, VM and even configuring your networking, setting like IP so you can always connect from your local machine, you know, connecting via SSH, uh, modifying files, all kinds of stuff. So if this is your first time joining, consider subscribing. There's a lot more to come. So let's dive in. Um, so in today's agenda, like I said, we go through these steps. Uh, so first step is. Uh, to download the software we need and there's a couple things you need to download uh, and, and I'm assuming you haven't even installed um, VirtualBox yet although I have installed it but I'll show you which version you want to get by the way I'm gonna have a uh, blog post that's gonna uh, give you all the details on this uh, all the links that uh, I'm, I'm using in this video so I'll, I'll include that in the description of the video. So if you try to follow all the steps, uh, just go to the blog post. You can copy paste. There's um, all the links and uh, configuration stuff in there as well. So first thing we do is go, we go to the VirtualBox downloads and depending on what your machine is, your host, your main, main, main machine uh, platform, if it's Windows or Mac, the nice thing with VirtualBox is that they support um multiple platforms uh, so it's it's nice so in my case i have a windows machine so i'm gonna um, i've downloaded i'm gonna you need to hit the windows one and and download that um set second thing you need to do you need to download again maybe kick off these downloads before so that sometimes it could take a, a bit time to download iso especially sometimes they're bigger so for Ubuntu, I'm gonna install the server version. Uh, so what is the difference? Uh, if you are trying to use Ubuntu for development or hosting local sites, things like that, you generally don't need the, the user version, um, which, which has the user interface, because uh, that's gonna take a lot more space and maybe more memory. So. Uh, in my case, again, but it's, if that's what you want, you can select that ISO. But in my case, I want to get the server, uh, Ubuntu server, which is also heavily used in hosting, you know, in, in the hosting providers. That's what they give you, the server version. So if you try to mimic the same, might as well install the server version locally without having a UI. So you, you can get used to using command line and the features it has to offer. So I'm gonna select the latest version. So again, this link I'll, I'll include in the blog post, but I'm gonna select the latest version. And um, and it's it's 1910. And go to releases. And this will take you to the release page. This is, a, this is where sometimes you might get a bit confusing. There's a lot of different versions and if, if you haven't, and I've done, I've done this myself where I uh, selected and installed the wrong version and I had to do the whole thing over again. So be sure to select the proper version, the correct version for your um, needs. Uh, so you, you wanna select, 
if you have a standard PC, the AMD version 64 bit version. And if you look at the, the you know, the URL of this, the, the first one again, server install image. Um, this is, see, this is ARM. This is not what you want. You want the AMD version. 64 bit and it's the one you want to download just click on it. It'll start downloading. I've done I've done it already but once it's done, I usually I usually um, So I've created a VMs folder in my C drive just so you can understand uh, how I'm doing it and I just copy the ISO here or just move it here from downloads folder just so I have it uh, for um, if I need to use it again um, so once you've done that and you also you have also downloaded VirtualBox and installed it again VirtualBox installation just follow the the simple spring you know just the default options is fine there's nothing special you need to configure with that so once you install it you will get a um, and once it runs you get something like this again you will have it empty you won't have any VMs here but you can click on tools here that's what you want to do to start creating your new VM okay so at this point we've done the downloads and now we need to uh, following our agenda uh, right we need to um, create a VM so what you want to do is come to uh, tools here and click on new and this is it's gonna by default create in your home directory that's not what I want I actually want the path on the C level so I'm gonna replace this this with just C VMs and I'm gonna just call this VM1 you can again you can name it whatever you want but uh, I also like to number this the VMs based on um, the IP address that I will eventually end up using um, and I'll, I'll and again in the next videos I'm gonna cover the networking parts of it um, but again you can name it whatever you want but if you wanna the, like how I do naming sometimes is following the last number of the IP address so that it's easier for me to remember which IP I need to use to get to which VM if you know if you have multiple VMs especially so next thing you want to do is uh, select Linux because we have Linux Ubuntu 64-bit um, that's the ISO we have click on next memory the more you the more the, the more the better but uh, I give a list minimum two gigs this this is enough to kind of run nicely uh, Linux um, Ubuntu server uh, without causing a lot of issues. So two gig of memory is fine. You click on next. Um, default selection is fine on this. I want the ten gig um, size. Um, click on create. The default selection is fine I'm not changing that but here I do want to change I can't recall exactly what issues I had with dynamically allocated hard disks sometimes um, it would show me that it's running out of space I think so I again you can leave it default but in my case I want to select the fixed size because I want this VM to um to be 10 gig and it be fixed size that's what i want to give it if i ever want to change it i can come back and change it but uh um initially 10 gig is fine for a vm in my case uh, you can select more if you know you have to do a lot more but um, in my case it, it's fine so i'm gonna click on next that's fine it's gonna see it's gonna put it in the vm1 folder on uh, in their cvms Click on create. This might take a minute or so. And I'm gonna show you the, the easy way to install it from ISO, right? And I know uh, some other videos will show you to uh, attach the ISO as a drive and all that. You can also do that, but 
I'm gonna take the easy route and I'll show you what I mean. See, once the VM is created, it's turned off. I'm not gonna change any other settings at this point. Okay, I'm gonna just keep hit on start. And let's see what it's gonna do. Okay guys, so somehow it's popping up on my second monitor and I can't show you that specific screen. So, but basically you will get a window like this, like this first time you start the VM, it'll ask you to select the startup disk and you can navigate to your ISO by clicking on the browse button here. And it's gonna select the ISO, attach it and start from ISO, okay? But if you hit cancel, start the second time, you get this window where no operating system is found. Um, you know, but, but if you do it first time, you should get the other window and that's easier to just select the ISO. But I'm, I'm guessing I can also select it from here. That's what I'm gonna try to do and see if that works. Again, this is the first time I'm doing this. I'm gonna select the ISO. And again, after selecting ISO, I had to turn it off and then just start again. So it's the same thing, uh, still pretty easy. You just navigate and select the disk, select the ISO, turn off the, you know, turn off your VM. Uh, you could just close it from here. It's gonna ask you if you wanna turn off. Say yes, and then start again. It's then it's gonna you know kick off from the ISO. Okay, so now let's go to the ISO installation. And again, some of this is just the default selections are fine. Hit hit enter. English, USA. Uh, keyboard layout leave it the the default. English, English. And sometimes this might take a bit of time. Um, and I might speed up the video in some, some of these sections, but um, usually it takes about five or 10 minutes to get this installed, not that long. Um, so we'll continue after this is done. And again, there's a few screens that's gonna pop up and I'll try to show you all the screens. So, um, So you're familiar with them. Okay, so now it's gonna try to name the VM. And I usually give it the same host name as the name of the VM. Oh, I named it VM1, so that's when that was that's what I'm gonna want the host name to be as well. And then hit continue. And uh, user. It's called Vimeo One User. You might wanna give it your name or something, but this is fine. And again, this is the first account it's gonna create outside of the root user. I'm gonna go ahead and create this account, but what we're gonna do at the end is to set the root password so we can log in as root. So, because technically it's on my local uh, workstation and I don't wanna have a trouble of permissions all the time and this and that, I would rather just log in as, as root. So it's, I'm gonna, at the end, I'll show you how, how, you to, do, how to do that. Hit continue, you wanna choose a password. Continue, it's gonna ask to type it again. And again, you want you need this user because first time to log in into the VM, you'll have to use this user. Um, I forgot what we named the user, is it VM1? I'm gonna go back and we'll quickly check to make sure. Oh, VM1, just call, call it VM1 user. So it's, it's different from the host name. So VM1 user, password. Continue. 
And I'm in LA, so yes, the time zone is correct. <laughs> Here's the, this is the part for partitioning. Um, I really just go with the select entire disks. You know, you could, I'm not sure what this LVM thing does, but I want to just select the entire disk. Um, yeah, it's fine. And then you want to select yes, write these changes to the disk. And again, you can use your keyboard to or the top key uh, to go between the selections that it gives you. Okay, almost there. And again, if you guys have any questions about any any of this, feel free to write in the comments. I'll try to get to you. Um, or if something doesn't work for you, most likely, again, uh, this will work in the future versions as well. So by the time if you're watching this video and there's like Ubuntu version 20 or whatever version it has, the usually ISO uh, should work similar. There might be some small menu changes here and there, but usually um, the process will, will be pretty similar. Um, and the nice thing with VirtualBox, and again, I'm gonna show you in the future videos as well, but uh, it has a lot of features. I know it looks a simple tool, but it has a lot of really nice and cool features anywhere from sharing your folders between your Windows machine and the Linux host. Um, I'm gonna hit continue on this as well. And also uh, networking configuration or, you know, um, the another nice thing is like the backups, you can you can take a snapshot of the VM, which we're gonna do at the end of this, just just so you get a, an idea how it's done. It's really simple and quick. And you really wanna do that every time you, you are gonna do something major on the VM, you wanna have a backup. So I'll show you how, how to do that as well. Again, first couple times using it, using VirtualBox is a bit um, tricky if you don't know what you're doing, but uh, once you get a hang of it, it's really easy to use tool. Uh, I really recommend it over anything else at this point because number one, it's free. Number two, it's cross-platform and, and it's, it's easy to use. Um, so here I want to do, I, would, I do want to select to automatically install updates. You might want to leave the default, but I'm going to select that. So this is the, the tricky part here. So out of the box, it gives you all these things you can kind of pre-install. And if that's what you want to do, you should do it. I should mention that um, I will have a link below to Zoom Admin, which is uh, a technology we, we built and I'm the founder of Zoom Admin, uh, that allows you to remotely install uh, any of these things on your servers and and again I will have a link below to um, a playlist of these videos so you can and towards the end I will show you how you connect your local VM let me say this again you collect your you, you connect your local VM to the one we're just creating with our zoom admin cloud-based platform and use zoom admin to manage your local vm again it's a really something cool i think no one else has this offering you can install stuff you want you can create websites you can do all kinds of things i will again leave it to to that to those videos but um you know in my case that's why i don't want to install anything else here but if you want you can select other stuff i do want to install ssh server because that's that's something we're gonna 
use in the next videos as well. But everything else I'm going to leave blank. Hit continue. And it does take a minute or two to get this installed. And again, if you guys really, you know, like the video, have questions, feel free to write comments or hit the like button. Subscribe because there's a lot more videos coming up specifically on virtual box. Okay guys, looks like it's almost done. Just a couple more minutes, I think we're about to finish the installation. Just hit yes on this one. It's fine. And it says it's trying to finish installation now. And finally, it's asking to continue. Um, yeah. Now it's going to reboot automatically. And if everything is fine, it should get the uh, login screen in a moment and remember you have to use the user you created during installation to log in so make sure you write down the, the password and the username you, you created before so we I think named it vm one user and the password voila we are we have logged in so one final step I wanna do is to set the root password and for that um, there is an easy command you run it's just sudo um, passwd short for password and then root it's gonna first ask you the the vm1 user's password type that again New password for root. This is the one um, again you want to make sure you remember because it's the root password. And it's done. So, um, one last thing we want to try is just reboot and log in as, as root. You want to make sure that that password works now. So, I'm going to reboot again. Just type in a reboot, a reboot command, it's going to reboot again. And this time I'm gonna use root and the password we um, I created. And there you go. Now I've, I've logged in as root user. And uh, this is the you know you can cd to the main directory to see the folders, files. So everything seems seems to be working. So one final thing we're gonna do is take a snapshot, a, which is also a way of taking a backup in, of the current state of the machine. And what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close this window, which will shut it down. Last me want to turn off, so now yes, turn off. And here, make sure that VM is selected. Okay and then take a snapshot if you point your mouse here it's gonna say take a snapshot see it says current state it's basically it's the current state it, it means you don't have uh, any snapshots yet and the reason why this is really important is because next time you log in you want to install something something crashes uh, it's really easy to go back to this current state to this state of the machine uh, and I'm going to take a snapshot I'm going to call it actually uh, fresh install 
So, so this way, and see how quick it is. It's like a couple seconds. It's done. It doesn't take doesn't take long. It, it's really quick to do. And same thing with the restore. Let's say I wanna do something. I can come back here and right click on this and just restore. Again, you have to make sure that the machine is turned off. And it's it's uh, super quick. I mean, you can just one click and it's done. It, it's really quick. Uh, but if you don't do this and if you mess up something on your VM, you have to go to the whole ISO installation process again. So to avoid that, especially because we're gonna configure more stuff, shared folders, SSH, all kinds of things, a static IP address. Um, that's why we wanna make sure each time we do a major milestone and it's working, take a snapshot so that you know that that's the working state. You can always go back to it. Now, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to, um, you know, how to connect your local VM, not uh, your local machine to the VM, be able to SSH, uh, configure the net networking with the uh, IP address, static IP address, and then also um, be able to SSH into the VM from your local machine. Okay, and one last thing I guess I'll show you in the next time but um, the default installation automatically gives you internet access on the VM so if you just ping Google um, it should work but but again we'll t also show I'll also sh I'll also show you that in the next video that's that's covering the networking and like static IP and again I'll have a link to the complete playlist of these videos be below uh, so if you want to continue watching, feel free to click the link to go to all the videos. Again, it's really important to do the complete, complete, complete configuration the first time so that you have all these features that it gives you. Next life a lot easier in the long run. When you have a static IP, it doesn't change. You can rely on connecting to your VM all the time via SSH. So you want to make sure some of those things are configured. And it took me a while initially to figure some of this stuff out. Uh, I'm no Linux guru, I'm, you know, uh, I'm a developer by heart, but uh, sometimes you have to go in and do stuff in Linux. Yeah, and um, I've done all that work already to configure all that stuff that it's working and I'll show you how to do it. Uh, and for you, it should take uh, really uh, much less time. Thanks again for watching. Um, Hit that like button if you like the video. Consider subscribing to our channel. Like I said, there's a lot more videos to come. Thanks for watching. See you next time.